Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and today we're going to be taking a look at creating a bunch of different kinds of atmosphere. We're going to be creating some atmosphere like on the outside of a planet, some mist, and uh, some cinematic science fiction energy as well. Uh, so that being said, let's jump right in and get started. First on our list is an atmosphere around a planet um, without using any post-processing. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a sphere. This is going to be the planet. I'll hit smooth shading. Then I'm going to go over and add a new material. I'm going to go to surface and change its color to be a little darker and brown. Then I'm going to go over and add a small rendered view down at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I'm going to make the background completely black as if we were in space. Then I'm going to add in a sun lamp and rotate it to the side a bit to give us some lighting on the side of our planet. Then I'm going to rotate it so we've got about two-thirds of the planet in light and one-third in shadow. I'm going to go ahead and turn off transparent background. Uh, I have that checked by default. Then I'm going to go to the node editor and uh, switch to material. Add in a noise texture. I'm going to add in a bump map, uh, bump node as well. Plug the noise color into the height of the bump and the bump normal into the normal of the diffuse. And then I'm going to turn the distortion up for the noise texture quite a bit to give us some bump on the surface of the planet. I'm going to add a color ramp in between the bump and the noise texture to control the way the bump on the planet looks. Now I'm going to go back to the 3D view and shift D to duplicate the sphere. I am going to delete the material and add a new one for this second sphere. This is going to be the atmosphere. So I'm going to delete the diffuse shader and add in a shader volume scatter. I'll plug this into the volume input. Then I'm going to add in a texture, gradient texture. I'm going to control shift click on it and set it to spherical. I'm going to try adding in a texture coordinate. I'm going to also try adding in a geometry node. I plug the position into the gradient texture and that seemed to work the way I wanted it. So we'll just leave it at that. And we're going to change the color of the volume scatter a bit. I'll make it bluish. I'm going to add in a vector mapping node in between the geometry node and the gradient texture. In this case, scaling up the sphere will not change anything because you have it plugged into the position. It will not change at all when you scale up the sphere. You're going to have to scale up the actual texture in order for anything to change. I'm going to set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and uh, then I'm going to turn the density up. Once you've got that, you can scale the actual planet to match the atmosphere if you want to. That might work better. And... Uh, Then I'm going to add in a mix shader and an emission shader. This will plug into the bottom socket of the emission shader and uh, grab the same color that's in the volume scatter. I'm just going to grab the gradient texture and plug that into the strength on the emission shader just to give us sort of a little bit of a glow to the atmosphere on the back as if the planet is reflecting the light through the atmosphere all the way around to the other side. It's not necessarily realistic, but it does look pretty cool, so that's what we're going to be going for. Next, we're going to switch back to the 3D view, and I'm going to duplicate the planet sphere, scaling it up a little bit. Then I'm going to minus the texture and add a new one again. This is going to be some clouds around the planet. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a noise texture. And uh, then I'm going to delete the diffuse shader and add in a volume scatter. I'll plug this into the volume input again and uh, plug the color into the density on the volume scatter. Add a math node in between the two, set it to multiply and turn it up quite a bit. Then I'm going to pull the noise texture out and add in a converter color ramp in between these two. And just begin pulling the contrast up um, on the noise texture just so that you've got strong whites and strong blacks. Then I'm going to turn the distortion up as always and turn the scale up quite a bit as well. Then I'm going to go back and scale the planet down just a little more um, so that the clouds and atmosphere have more space. I always set denoising down to 0.25 um, or at least I usually do and turn the sampling up so the denoising doesn't cause crazy artifacts. Anyways, then I'm going to render it out and uh, see what it looks like. 
So as you can see, the clouds look a little odd. If I was you, I would turn your volume bounces up quite a bit and uh, that should make them look significantly better. Um, with a little more work, you can get this, which is pretty good looking. I turned the volume samples up, messed with the cloud texture a little more, added in like a ring of fire around the planet or something, and uh, it looks pretty science fiction and pretty good. Anyways, next up on the list, some atmosphere for a bit of a city. I'm going to add in a cube and hit GZ to move it up on the Z axis, then I'm going to duplicate it and uh, scale it up a bit. Just scale and place a bunch of cubes around uh, until you get a bunch of random buildings for a city. You don't have to do this. I am just doing this to demonstrate um, the fog on. I'm going to hit Control G and add them to a group and uh, move them to a far layer. Next, I'm going to place the camera and uh, add a particle system. This particle system will be to grow the buildings and uh, I'm going to duplicate the small ones so that there is just less of the taller buildings. Then I'm going to grab the vertices and warp them around so the city isn't, you know, completely symmetrical. And I'm going to set the amount of particles to the exact amount of vertices. Next I'm going to add in a sun lamp and rotate it off to the side, turn its brightness up quite a bit. Then I'm going to hit use nodes on the background and we'll just make the sky bluish for now. I'm going to add in a cube and scale this up to encompass the entire city and the camera. Then I'm going to go to the node editor and hit new material. I'm going to delete the diffuse shader and shift a volume scatter. Plug this into the volume input and turn its density down. Then I'm going to add in a texture noise texture and plug it into the density for the volume scatter. Add in a color ramp in between the noise texture and the volume scatter and uh, again just begin turning up the contrast with this color ramp. Then I'm going to set the size up just a little bit and turn up the distortion as always. Add in a converter math node and set it to multiply in between the color ramp and the volume scatter. Turn this up a little bit and control shift click on the volume scatter node again. And uh, now I'm going to go to the UV image editor and do another render. Okay, so now that that render is finished, I'm going to go and hit shift S on the volume scatter node and add an, an emission shader instead. This will give us the same kind of thing. Um, I might turn the density down a bit and uh, then do another render. Alright, so that render is finished and it looks pretty good. Um, you can see the difference between the emission shader in the volume scatter input and the volume scatter input shader is that the emission shader gave you way less noise. And, uh, and other than that, they look pretty much the same. Obviously, the one with the emission shader brightened up the scene quite a bit, but... Um, in this case, I would always end up using an emission shader for my atmosphere because the volume scatter just took way too long to render and produced way too much noise. So anyways, we're going to be looking at one more option. I'm going to delete the cube and then I'm going to go over to the world settings. Here we're going to add in a volume scatter node under the volume input for our world. I'm going to set its strength down quite a bit, and as you can see, the render is totally black. That's because we have to use a spot lamp instead of a sun lamp. I'll pull this way up so that it covers the entire city, and then turn its strength um, quite a bit up. I'm going to switch over to the node editor on this lamp, and shift A, search for a light, and add in a light fall off node. I will plug it into the emission shader strength. And uh, now the strength on the light fall off node is what controls the strength of our lamp. So I'm going to rotate it and uh, give us a little better angle. So as you can see, this is the result, um, which is pretty nice. And I ended up using that for this image right here, and it came out looking really nice. Um, in the end, I might still go with um, the emission uh, cube for this, but... Uh, you know, it's up to you, and those are the three ways you can add mist or smog or atmosphere to your scene.
So the next example is going to be some cinematic energy. It's going to be the stuff that you get in all the big science fiction movies. So anyways, add in a cube and uh, go to the node editor. I'm going to hit new texture and delete the diffuse texture. Here we're going to add in a shader volume scatter. Plug that into the volume input of the material output. Then add a texture gradient texture. Plug that into the density of the volume scatter and grab sphere. Here I'm going to go input and uh, texture coordinate. Plug in object to the gradient texture and that gives us what we want. Basically we want a halo like sphere at the origin of the cube. So now I'm going to turn the strength of the emission shader up a little bit and uh, go back to the node editor. Go ahead and add in a texture noise texture. Add in a color mix RGB and set it to multiply. Then I'm going to add a color ramp in between the noise texture and the mix node and mix the gradient texture and the noise texture together. Then I'm going to control shift click on the volume scatter node to view it while we mess with the noise textures color ramp and uh, distortion and all the regular stuff. So now I'm going to duplicate the noise texture and plug it into another color ramp. Now I'm going to plug the second color ramp into the emission shader. This is going to color our smoke. So go ahead and drag the black node all the way forward and give it whatever color you want. Then I'm going to replace the black ramp so it goes black whatever color you want and then white. And uh, then I'm going to set it to B spline and adjust that. But now I'm going to add in a converter and uh, math node. Plug that in between the strength and set it to multiply so that we can turn it up again. <sighs> Looks pretty good. Um, now I'm going to go to the world settings and just drag the color all the way down to black. I'll just delete one of the noise textures and plug it into both the color ramp that controls the color and the volume density of our energy. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and do a render. And um, when you're rendering an emission shader, you hardly need any samples. So I'll just set it down to 8 and turn denoising de off. And that's still going a little slow for me. So I'm going to go all the way down to 2. And that looks about right. So with just a little more work, you can add a glass cube around the energy and uh, get yourself a tesseract or, you know, other energy stones. So I hope you guys like that tutorial. I'll be coming out with another tutorial, hopefully pretty soon. And uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This is Iridesium. Bye.